The scripture reading for today is from 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 1 to 5. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 to 5. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that ye both do the will, do the things which have, we have commanded you, and the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and to the patient waiting for Christ. We thank you for this very morning. We thank you for getting us through this past week. We come here, Lord God Almighty, to receive of you all that you have for us. For we know that your word is life, that the word of God is life. For the word of God is the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are able to freely receive the precious seed of life, the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to freely worship you and to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the name above all names. We are so grateful and thankful to be called the children of God. For we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We invite Jesus into our lives as our Lord and Savior. And believe in our hearts that God, you raised your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. He died once and he will not die again. And he is coming again. He will be coming soon and so that we will be able to join the Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds to be with him forever and ever. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that Jesus came. He took the stripes that we may be healed. And we continue to lift up unto you, Sister Emilita. Pray you touch her, Lord, and encourage her. And thank you for the healing by the stripes that Jesus, we declare healing for her. For Sister Bakamaya as well, you, we pray that you just touch her, Lord, and for her healing. For Dr. Kim Chan Wan, may you just touch him, eliminate all bad cells, Lord, and give him only good cells that he shall be healed and whole. Brother Choron as well, Lord, as he goes through his recovery, his, his therapy, and may be encouraged and know that, Lord, you are with him. Brother Tom's mother, Sister Victoria, too, as she continues to fight the good fight of faith, knowing that through faith she can receive her healing. For Gary and Maeda, Sister Pick, Esther Samanim's mother as well, Pastor Jesse, one me Samanim's father, Sister Rachel's father, Mike Kness, Sister Arlene's sister and nephew as well. We pray, Lord, that they would receive their healing by, through faith by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Pray, Lord, for a good report for Deacon Ness as well. Father, we pray continually for peace in Jerusalem, peace on the Korean Peninsula, peace in Nigeria, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, the Republic of the Philippines, and the United States of America. And Father, we pray, Lord, for peace, for wisdom and protection for the presidents and their families as well. And Father, we go to you. You are Jehovah Jireh. We go to you, Lord, for 100% gainful full-time employment for every member in VCF, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that you are our great Jehovah Jireh. 
And Father, I pray, Lord, for each one in the VCF ministries, in the VCF church, that there will be 100% faithful service, that people would serve you, Lord, in all the VCF ministries, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We ask for your grace and your presence here. We ask that your angels surround this meeting and protect it against demonic attacks, interferences, or obstructions. May the word of God have free course in this service and to all those who are receiving it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for this time. Come, Holy Spirit. We welcome your presence. We welcome, Lord, the word of God, and we come here expecting to receive all that you have for us. May your kingdom come and your will be done this morning, touching our hearts, changing us, and transforming us. And Father, we do this all for your glory. May you be pleased, Lord, as we offer our lives as a living sacrifice. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I give the Lord a praise clap. For God is good and all the time. Okay, look at someone and say, I love you with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, yesterday uh, we had a joyful time as we had our water baptism service. Amen. There were seven individuals. Seven in the Bible will indicate completeness. Okay, that's what it means, completeness and fullness. So, um, praise God. Seven of them... Um, um, made that statement, they made a confession, profession to the world that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior and they obeyed the Lord in uh, following in the water baptism. We're going to have a time after the sermon um, to present their certificates, but I want to congratulate all of you. Amen? Okay, take, it, take advantage of these opportunities. Because uh, we don't do it quite often as we do a Holy Communion, but it is one of our sacraments, Holy Communion, as well as the, the uh, water baptism. So if you have never been immersed, um, you should be immersed because we, we want to obey the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning is about, um, is entitled, That the Word of God Have Free Course. That the word of God have free course. The apostle Paul in his epistle to the church in Thessalonica uh, asked, he, he asked the, the, the people, the Christians in Thessalonica, he says, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course. And this is quite interesting because he could ask, um, he could say, hey, ask God that we have um, provisions we have uh, enough financial uh, means so we can do the, do the uh, will of God. And that's what I hear constantly, always about provisions and providing. But he's asking for that the word of the Lord, which is the word of God, have free course. So just like a river that flows, he was asking that the, the, the word of God would have free course to, to, to be able to reach out and touch the people that he would go out to share the gospel with. And we know that the Apostle Paul was one, he was a missionary, as well as he was an apostle, but also a missionary. He was more than that, he was a teacher and uh, other things as well, evangelist. But he would go to different places, to the Gentiles throughout the world to share the gospel. And I want you to understand the concept of having the Word of God have free course. One of it is that the Word of God will be able to, to, to go and um, be, uh, not be um, um, inhibited or be obstructed by, by the evil one or by evil people. Because evil people, wicked people can try to, try to uh, disrupt the Word of God from coming. They, they can try to do things to obstruct the Word of God um, from being propagated. So they do that. They do it in all kinds of ways. And um, 
that, that's one way of ha having free course by, by these people not being able to obstruct it. Another way of the Word of God having free course is that people's hearts will be softened, will be able to receive the Word of God. And that there's many obstructions for, for the Word of God um, not being able to penetrate the minds and the hearts of people. And believe it or not, sometimes the Word of God may have difficulty penetrating people who have um, experience going to church. People have been raised up in church, and they learn a certain way, and even though it's the truth being spoken, they're going to block their mind be because they learned something from whatever church they went to, and uh, whoever the pastor or the teacher was, um, told them you, you shouldn't be learning this way and that way so they block the truth from entering into their minds and then into their hearts so even you as believers uh, though you can take pride in being raised up in a church and going to church for 20, 30, 40 years don't be somebody that's going to block the word of God because of um, um, whatever teachings that you had in the past that you don't want to accept the truth. Always be open to the truth. The truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And it only takes, it takes a, a tender heart. It takes an open mind to the truth that you can receive the truth. But if you block your mind, then you, uh, it's like um, trying to pour water in cement. And it, it doesn't do well. So you don't want to plant you don't want to plant something, a tree, in the cement because sometimes um, it's like trying to water it is, is, is fruitless. You're not able to water something that's in the cement. So some of our hearts, our minds are hardened. Always remember, we should be, continue to be students of the Bible, not just block our minds to the Word of God. So anyway, Paul is praying that the word of the Lord or the word of God may have free course and be glorified. He knew that the word of God was so important, so vital. And the word of God still remains so important. The word of God is also the Lord Jesus Christ. We know Jesus is the word of God. So the word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the only one that can save us. In John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way to go to the Father except through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Word of God. Romans 10, 17 says this, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So in order for us to be saved, anyone to be saved, they have to first hear the Word of God. They must hear the Word of God. And then you have faith to believe in the Word of God, and then you can be saved. So without hearing the Word of God, you cannot be saved. You're not going to be saved by, by just um, being a nice person. You are saved when you receive the gospel, the Word of God, and you have the faith to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you can have salvation. So Paul knew that. So his top priority was to get the word out. His top priority was to share the gospel throughout the world. There are many wonderful causes in this world, um, many uh, great things that we can do. Um, we can do many um, things like um, give our lives to serving, helping people to, to have uh, free medicine, um, to, to be able to, to have a good life and we can do all these things. There are people that have missions to, to build water well, wells, which is a good cause, a great cause, right? And so you can, you can focus your life on certain things in this, in this world. The Apostle Paul focused on sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He kept in his mind, in his heart, the main thing, and that was being able to share the gospel. We can do all these great, wonderful um, things to, to, to benefit society, and, and, and 
they're great, wonderful things, okay? But none of that is going to save you. Only thing that saves you is the Word of God. The only thing that saves us is the Word of God. Should we neglect making wells, water? No, of course not. We don't neglect those kind of things. But through all these things, we should see that it's about sharing the gospel. We go out to different places throughout the world, and we give them food, right? And food is good, amen? But guess what happens? They might be hungry, and they're happy, but food is going to digest, and later on, what happens? They get hungry again, yes? So, you understand? The Word of God is eternal. Not that we don't feed people. We do feed people. We, we have gone out to people here in the Soul Station. And there are many people that need food. And they're hungry. And uh, once, once we, we used to go up there, drive our cars, and th thank God we got police to help us. And we're passing out food. Uh, the, the ladies make rice, and they make um, kimchi, and they make pulgogi. We give meat, right? And once, once you notify one person, then next thing you know, there's about 200 people standing in line for free food. And that's, that's great. But they're going to get hungry the next day. So the point is, we do these kind of things not for a catch, not for a gimmick, not to trick them or anything, but to show God's love and food is good, Water is good and all that. But what is eternal is the Word of God. So the Apostle Paul knew that. So his emphasis was not on just the material things in life, but on the spiritual things, the things of eternity. And so he asked the people to pray for them that they would, the Word of God would have free course so that people could hear the word of God, faith coming by hearing, and then hearing by the word of God. So I likened the having free course, like in Isaiah 66, 12, the prophet Isaiah writes, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall you suck, ye shall be born upon her sides and be dandled upon her knees. So the word of God is like, like a flowing of the, the, the river, see? And, and let, the, let the word of God flow. Let it flow and, and reach out and touch the people. There are results when people receive the word of God, when they, when they embrace the word of God, there are going to be results. So if you receive the Word of God as the Word of God is the truth, life, then you will be able to benefit from the Word of God. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 3, the psalmist writes, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, somebody say whatsoever, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. As Christians, side note, we should be, we should prosper in all the things that we should do, in, in we do. We shall, ex, we should be excelling in things that we, that we do if we base it upon the word of God. This is not prosperity gospel. Name it, claim it, and then, then you get your, your Rolls Royce kind of uh, doctrine. When you receive the Word of God, because the Word of God is truth, we should all prosper. That's what the Word of God says, right? Whatsoever. So, side note, if you're not prospering, it's, you're not following the Word of God. Or maybe you don't know the Word of God, all right? So we have sympathy and compassion. There's, there's all kinds of uh, sad stories, and people need help here and there. But every one of you should be prospering if you receive and you embrace the Word of God. Amen?
You believe that? You believe that? Amen? Okay, some of you. You got three people that believe in the Word of God. But the Bible says, whatsoever you do, you shall prosper. That doesn't mean that life is an easy path and all that. No, it, it's hard. You, you work hard, but you work, uh, you do excellence, and God is going to prosper you. Amen? So we should be encouraged about that. When the Word of God has free course into your heart, you receive the Word of God, you should all prosper. And that's a great thing. And um, throughout the last year or two, I've been sharing about Kingdom Principles Financial Freedom. And, and then one of the, um, the members, uh, one of the students, or you know, one of the people that heard it said, so, so pastor, if we follow this, then we should be blessed, right? Amen? And I said, yes. So you don't really have sympathy for us. I said, I have sympathy for you guys, but if you obey what I shared with you, Kingdom Principles Financial Freedom, all of you should prosper. Every single one of you. Amen? Now, if you choose to do what you've been doing and you haven't been, uh, been blessed and all that, that's your fault. Not mine. Not God's. Yours. Because you haven't been following the Word of God. When you follow the Word of God, then we should all prosper. Amen? Some of you don't believe it. It's kind of hard because... You believe, well, I grew up poor and all that, and my parents were poor, my grandparents were poor, so I'm poor, and I can't make it through and all. No. You have the Word of God. You have the Word of God. So if you follow the Word of God, who's responsible is it to prosper you and bless you? God's, right? You're no longer responsible because you're obeying Him. The Apostle Peter, he was in the boat, and I said this before, the winds came, the waves came, and they were about to drown, right? About to sink. Jesus is walking on water. And then Peter is like, well, all of the apostles are like shocked. He's walking on water, right? And then Peter says this. He's bold. bold Peter's bold, bold. Jesus, if, this is, if, it is, if it is you... Not some kind of spirit or some kind of ghost or anything. If it is you, tell me to come. So Jesus says one word. Somebody say one word. Come. Jesus says come. Peter took the faith, looking at Jesus, and he walked, stepped out of the boat. The faith part is stepping out of the boat onto the water. Believe it or not, Peter also walks on water. So you think, oh, Pastor, you're crazy. This kind of story, you're telling me crazy story. No, it's in the Bible. So Peter walks on water, and then all of a sudden, he, he realizes, he comes to, quote-unquote, his senses, right? He slaps himself, wait a minute, I'm walking on water. It, I'm going to drown. And then now, instead of looking at the Lord Jesus Christ, who was responsible for him, right? Because as long as he was focused on Jesus, he could walk on water. He could have, he, in theory, could have walked all the way and shake, uh, shook, sh shaking Jesus' hands. But what he did was he began to take his eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ, and his faith uh, sunk, and he sunk as well. And, of course, Jesus saved him, and then he became the most, uh, mighty apostle Peter. So some of you are like looking at me like, yeah, that's just a good story. It's like the three bears, right? Goldilocks and the three bears. No, this is the Bible, the truth. You know, there are people that really believe that the Bible is the truth. I am one of them, amen? So when I come and, and we pray for you, for your healing, is because I believe that the Bible, that God is true, the word of God is true, and God heals you. Amen? Yes. So I don't come here to, I don't waste my gas, my time, because my time is precious, like your time, to come here to make you feel good. We go there because we want to see God touch you and get healed. Amen? Now, about the water thing, I don't recommend that you guys go buy a boat or rent a boat and walk on water, okay? That's not what I'm recommending. But, 
by faith. We, we need to trust in the Lord. Amen? Have you been trusting in the Lord, in the Word of God? For one, the Word of God is going to save you. You're going to be able to enter in the kingdom. You don't have to worry about something called dying, okay? You don't have to worry about it. Why? Because all you're going to be doing is this body is going to, is going to die, okay? Expire, but your spirit is going to move which one is still is alive right now, you're born again, your spirit is alive, it will just transition to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So we don't have to be worried about dying because we just move from this life to see the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. You're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry. And you know, one day we're going to have a teaching on this glorified body that everyone can have. Amen? And it's all found in the Word of God. So, let the Word of God have free course like that river that is flowing. The river that is flowing into your hearts, into your minds, so that you can be transformed, you can be changed. Don't block it. Don't put a dam. You know a dam? Some people put a dam in their hearts. Um, in in Kangwondo, they have um, many dams up there: Chunchun Dam, Soyong Dam, Sejong Dam, uh, Weom Dam. Right? It holds all the water, and then it stops the water. Don't put that block. Don't put that block in your mind or your heart to receive the word of God. But open open up the floodgates. Okay. So I like that song that we sang: "Open up the heavenlies." Right. But open up your hearts to receive the Word of God into your lives. You will get the refreshing. You will get a change in your life if you embrace the Word of God. Amen? Okay. So, we see here that free course has two perspectives. One, that it will go unobstructed from the apostles to, to the to the people that, that will receive the word, and then unobstructed um, into the minds and the hearts of people. Those are the two, um, the free course of the word of God. We should have our thinkings need to change, and I need I need to also change my have my thinking change. I need to think change my thinking too, because when we share the gospel. Because we have been running into a lot of uh, um, refusals and rejections and rebuttals and even um, persecutions and all that, we kind of build up in our psyche, our minds, that oh wow, uh, they're not gonna they're gonna reject the God, they're gonna they're not gonna like. So why should I go share the gospel? That's not the thinking we ought to have. Our thinking should be that. There are people that want to hear the gospel, okay? And you, you might meet 100 people, but maybe one only, 99 are going to reject the gospel, but maybe one wants to change and wants to receive that gospel. That one can be somebody named Cho Yonggi Moksanim, okay? Pastor Cho, one guy. And then that one guy can reach out and touch a million people. Yes? That one guy can be named Billy Graham. Okay? He heard a gospel, and then now he can touch a million people. You understand? So 99 might reject the gospel, but one may want to hear the gospel. And some people are desperate to hear it. This is what I believe here. All of us, we all want to live a great, wonderful life. Sometimes life is not fair. Sometimes you might get a curveball, okay, that is not straight. So sometimes in our lives and everyone's life, there's going to be something, a tragedy, something that is going to affect us 
is going to shake us to the very core of our lives. Now, I'm not saying that we ought to be, uh, we all, um, that I'm trying, that you, you all go through this. But there are times when something happens to us, or maybe our families, our loved ones, that is unexpected and is going to is going to shock us, is going to jolt us, is going to um, touch the very deepest part of our lives. It's going to shake us up, okay? And then, what if that time you're sharing a gospel and you meet somebody that is desperate? is desperate for something. They don't know what it is, but you have the gospel. You have the answers because you know the word of God. And then you can share the gospel with that person. Share the word of God. Some of you may have gone through a time of crises. Didn't know where to look. What's the answer? Oh, I try this, try that, try that. Everybody has all kinds of concoctions and remedies and then somebody shared with you the gospel some of you may have been affected in a personal way now if the people did not share the gospel with you how would you learn the gospel right you understand if they never did share it with you when you needed it you wouldn't be saved you wouldn't have eternal life but there was that some person that shared the gospel. In Acts 16, 29, I'll give you a, a case here. Then he called for a light. This is a jailer, right? And sprang in, came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And he spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in the house. What is this story about? Paul and Silas were, were thrown into jail for preaching the gospel. And then this man, the jailer, who's in charge, right? He's in charge of them. is responsible for their imprisonment to the next day so they can go face trial or whatever it is. So Paul and Silas are in the jail. They're singing all night at midnight. They're worshiping, praising, praising God, even though they have been unjustly um, arrested and thrown into jail. So the jailer cannot help but hearing that because they're singing loudly at midnight. And, and we don't know what else Paul and Silas are doing, but they're, they're speaking about Jesus somehow or singing about Jesus. And what happens is there's some kind of earthquake and all the doors of the, the jail, op jail cell opens up, the chains fall off, and these prisoners all have an opportunity to escape now. So the jailer is, the first thing he does is he wants to commit suicide. He wants to kill himself. Why? Because he's responsible for these prisoners. If the prisoners escape, he's going to get killed. They're going to execute him. Okay, that's the penalty in Rome for um, somebody that lets that prisoner escape. They, they, they will kill the j jailer or the one responsible. So he's about to kill himself, and then Paul says, wait, wait, don't, don't stop. We're all here. We're not running away. So now this man, because Paul He's going to save his life by not running away. He comes in scared, trembling, and he says, Sirs, he's the jailer now. He's the jailer. He's the guy in charge. He's saying, Sirs, he's showing Paul the utmost respect. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And then Paul says, You know, you and your family, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. There are going to be people that are going to go through these crises here. And they're going to need something. At that time, the word of God has free course into their lives. They're, they're all ears. They're open heart right now to receive the gospel. Just like this, this jailer here. 
he is going out and he's going to he's asking Paul what do I need to be saved amen so be be people that are going to be spiritually uh, alert that there are going to be people that are going to be desperate for the word of God be prepared to share the gospel with these people. When the door is open, that's the time to share the gospel. Here's another case here. In Acts 17, 10, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas. They're running for their life, right, by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were too, were so. Therefore many of them believe also of honorable men which were Greeks and of men not a few. So the Apostle Paul and Silas are running for their lives because the people in Thessalonica, I believe, were about to kill them. So it's a good thing they ran away and they end up in this place called Berea. They meet the Bereans, okay? The Bereans. The Bereans now somehow know the Old Testament they know the scriptures of the Old Testament, and Paul is teaching them about Jesus. They have an open mind to the truth, and they are now checking with the Word of God and receiving what Paul has. They're open-minded to the truth. And the Bible says that there are going to be, there were people that received the gospel, and they accepted it. So when we pray that the Word of God has free course, we should pray with an expectation that, that there are going to be people that are going to receive the word of God. And um, instead of going in with a, with a mind that's based on experience, with a negative mind saying, ah, nobody's going to believe and all that, we should go in there expecting that we're going to have an opportunity wherever we are planted, and all of us are planted in an area, whatever it is, at our work, at our neighborhoods, that we have opportunity to share the gospel. We just need to be spiritually attuned and sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit that when that opportunity arises, we go in and we share, okay? Now, a lot of people like to force their way in. They like to force... You as spiritual beings have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can alert you, can tell you, can prompt you that this person is ready to receive the gospel. When that door is open, then you move in and begin to share the gospel that you all well know. You, you know so well because you, you have been coming to church for 20, 30, 40 years. So you know the gospel. It's time to use your mouth to share the gospel. Amen? So, we see here that there's another case here. There are people that want to change, their lives changed. Um, I know I wanted my life changed, and I sought the Lord, okay? So, there are probably other people that want their lives changed as well. And so, they may have been living in life, and, and now... They want their lives changed. So we see here a case of a man named Zacchaeus. Let me give you some background on Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is the, the, the chief, like the, the supervisor of the tax gatherers. He's a very wealthy man. Now, there's, there's, there's two ways of getting wealth. Um, honestly and dishonestly. He got his wealth dishonestly. Some of you are getting wealth dishonestly. Do not get your wealth dishonestly. Amen? Get your wealth honestly. But we see a man that everybody knows he is a crook. He's a crook. He's head of the crooks. Because they all, the Jewish people looked at the tax gatherers who are also Jewish. They were employed by the uh, Roman government so Zacchaeus was probably a GS-12, and, and maybe Matthew was a GS-11, okay? And Zacchaeus was in charge of the other uh, leaders, right? 
the tax gatherers. What they would do to make money is whatever the, the requirement was, they would tell the, uh, they would, if this was the amount of money that the Roman government required, they said they knew that, but they would charge extra. So with the money that um, the people gave them this high, they would give that money to the Roman government, so the Roman government loved them, and then they would take the surplus, okay, right? They were cheaters, they were crooks, they were sinners, yes? They were rich. Zacchaeus must have been filthy rich. So just because people have money, that doesn't mean they're honest people. They could be crooks. He was a crook. The Jewish people hated him. So the Bible says, refers to him as a sinner. Okay, so Jesus comes into town. Jesus is walking in. But Zacchaeus knew that he was wrong. He was convicted by the Holy Spirit because he had been evil. He had done wicked things. In Luke 19, 5, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at, my, at thy house. The Bible says Zacchaeus was a man of short stature. He was a short man. There's a big crowd around Jesus. They're all wanting to be healed or get blessings from Jesus. And he couldn't penetrate that crowd. So what he does is he climbs up this sycamore tree, a tree, a tall tree, and he's there and he's looking at Jesus. Now there's many people surrounding Jesus, many, many people. Jesus points out Zacchaeus. He says, Zacchaeus, today I'm going to have dinner at your house. I'm going to be at your house. Jesus could have picked these others, but the Holy Spirit prompted Jesus and said, go point out Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus climbs down the, mount, uh, the, the, the tree, and he's all excited, right? And the people are gossiping. This is what they say. And he made haste, and he came down from the tree and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, the people, right, they all murmured, saying that he was go gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Okay? So we know Zacchaeus is a crook. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my people I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold, not twice, not triple, but four times the amount he's going to restore it. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So the people, the people, knowing that Zacchaeus was a sinner, was a crook, were beginning to murmur or gossip and say, Look at that. Doesn't he know that this guy is the worst of all the sinners? He's, he's a crook. But nobody knew what was in the heart of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus knew that he was wrong. He was wrong. And he says, I'm going to restore now. Half of my goods, whatever that half is, I'm giving it to the poor. And then whatever, wh whomever I, I, I tricked or cheated, I'm going to give them four times the amount I cheated them. So my simple math is Zacchaeus is going to end up with little to nothing left, okay? Because he wanted a change in heart. So ask God that there be free course, that you, you will be able to share the gospel because you never know what people are thinking. You never know where they are in their lives, that they perhaps want a change in their lives. And then you're going to be that one that's going to be used by God so that another one can, can accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, I once shared the gospel, and um, there was a young man, a 19-year-old soldier, right? 
And probably this was his first assignment away from the family and away from everything. that He joined the army and came here to Korea. So I shared the gospel, and he accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And like two minutes after, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. You know, just amazing, phenomenal. And then a week, two weeks, or a month, I, I don't know, later, he says, thank you, sir. I said, why? No, I'm thinking, why, you know? He says, you saved my life. I didn't know that that young man was thinking about suicide. I didn't know that he was lonely, that, that Jesus saved him at that right time. I don't know what's going on in people's lives. I have heard stories where there's someone standing next to somebody, right, in the church, and both of them praising the Lord, singing the praise and worship, like everybody else does, they're singing the praise and worship. But at that time, one of the men standing next to him was about to kill himself. He got fired. He got kicked out of the military. He couldn't find a job. He had four children to feed. He's ready to jump off the, the, the apartment. He's going to kill himself. But this man of God, who had no idea that that was going to happen, befriended him, made, made a friend with him. And down the road, this man, who was about to commit suicide, became a pastor. His life was turned around. So I don't know what's going on in your life, but may the gospel have free course in your life because Jesus saves. The word of God saves and only the word of God saves. And I pray that your heart should be open to the gospel. I pray that you will be a willing vessel to share the gospel to others that you don't know what's going on in their lives. And so that people can enter into the kingdom of heaven and be saved. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. May your word have free course. The word of God have free course. Let us be your vessel to share it with others. And I pray, Lord, that each one's hearts will be open to receive your word as well. Thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward for the receiving?